Another chapter to add to Paul Ackford's career and the encouraging news for Quinns is that Neil Edwards has recovered from a neck injury and will partner Ackford in the second row. On the flank, Mark Russell, who hasn't played a match since damaging knee ligaments at the beginning of the year, replaces Mickey Skinner. A surprise selection behind the scrum where Craig Luxton displaces the regular scrum half this season, Rob Glenister. Bath had the luxury of selecting from strength with just one change to their preferred side. Steve Ojomo coming in at blindside for David Edgerton who has a rib injury. Otherwise it's a hugely experienced 15 with Chilcot, Hill and Barnes having each played in six cup finals. Your commentators Bill Beaumont and Nigel Starmer-Smith. Carling doing some uh, good setting up work there in the Harlequin drive. This uh, revamp pack still going on. Only three, four metres out, they could make it to the line. Referee looks, the ball is out to Luxton. Wedderburn on the right. So close then to an opening score in the opening play. Harlequin's pressure. Still possession for Harlequins. Luxton is there. Chaloner, the long feed, beautifully taken by Carling. The cover's there, Carling almost away. Good work by uh, Guskett, and it's a penalty to Harlequins. What a rousing start for a side that come here as underdogs and has a revamp pack which really took Bath to the cleaners in that opening uh, ball. Yes, tremendous play by the fours. They kept the ball in tight. Will Carley showed his great strength there on two occasions in the tackle and when he set up the mall and it enabled the Harlequins to have this easy penalty chance for David Pears. Yes. And it's three points. Superb uh, point scoring tally in the cup run. 41 now becomes 44. Harlequins in victory over Bedford, Wasps, Roslyn Park and Leicester. So two sides whose appearance in... And Bath inside their 22. Smuggled by Quinns, it's in the possession of uh, Neil Edwards there, the Scotland international. Good line out. Buxton, Halliday, bursting powerfully as ever, but uh, Winterbottom, I think, managed to get over on the wrong side. There's Carling. Pears in the line, beautifully played, Pears, Webb got a hand to the pass and knocked it out of harm's way. And a bit of uh, tension as Swift is held in touch. I would have thought there might have been an on the burst. May have been a bit high by Halliday, but it's uh, allowed as Fallon, another of those strong bursts. Hart trying to set it back. In front of the post, Barnes, Guska, little chip and chase. The cover is there from Wedderburn, it's harmless. First real signs of Bath uh, pressure here. Let's see Jerry just got the ball just going away from him and good cover by the Quinns here that uh, you see Mike Wedderburn comes back there to cover. But the problem that Bath have... The success story he's been with Scotland. Luxton to Challoner. Halliday, Pears. Wedderburn to chase, Webb across, hopes it'll bounce over the line, had to play it. And scurried the kick away. Nasty decision to make there. Well, a good kick here by David Pears. That John Webb is one of those that he was just hoping that the ball would roll over the line so that he could touch it down. But in actual fact, he has to play it beforehand. And good pressure again by Mike Wedderburn and the Harlequins back. And the clearance kick gives Quinns the throw in. Neil Edwards, the front jumper. Paul Ackford returned under pressure, bowing to Dick Best's request. Edwards at the front to Moore. Held up, but driving well. Still in possession. Still there at the uh, middle of the phalanx. Quinn still going to the line. They're still there, that could be a try, it is given. Peter Winterbottom. And that's only the second time he's ever scored for Harlequins. Peter Winterbottom, the scorer. 
58th game for the club, and that's an invaluable try. Only ever his second in Quinn's colours. Well, he started with a good catch by Neil Edwards here, but you see how the Harlequins get the ball to the back of the mall. They, they fall around, they drive on, and there's Peter Winterbottom touching down, really taking the leaf out of the bath book. Tremendous play by the Quinn's forwards. Well, this was an area where, I, I guess, Bill, we may have wondered, would the Quinns have the strength to hold Bath? This time, the boot's on the other foot. That's right, they started off the half extremely well driving, and there we see Peter Wonham. The reason why is they get the ball to the back of the mall when they do the driving. Peter Winterbottom celebrating his uh, 32nd appearance as Quinn's captain. So it's pairs with the conversion. Strokes it through. 9-0, the Harlequin lead, and that's uh, exactly the sort of build-up of points they would have wanted, knowing that it concedes a penalty and a first scoring chance, really, for Bath. The first kick at goal, anyway. And interesting that Bath... Well struck. It's a great kick. Exactly what Bath needed with less than five minutes to go to half time and uh, their support put together. But Bath now with the uh, impetus. But it's Luxton, Chaloner, Carling has a go. Just that little slide and had lovely pick up by Chaloner. Referee's blown for offside and is playing advantage still. And still, Chaloner, four to three here. Winterbottom inside, Chaloner again on the loop. Just outside the bath, 22. Possession for Quinns once more via Hobley. Huge feed from Chaloner from Halliday to Carling. Slips it on now to Sheesby, he can run. Sheesby is powerful, the cover's good from Bath. Everton Davis loses out to Andy Robinson. Hag is buried. Tremendous uh, dynamic play by both teams of Bath. Eleven is the uh, winger as Andy Robertson comes over for clarification. So this could well be a penalty and goal attempt for Harlequins in the offing. Final was even imminent. Fallon penalised then and a chance for Quinns to regain a nine-point advantage with a minute of injury time played at the end of this first half. Interesting to see that offence penalised because it was very much that offence that uh, caused the sending off of Justin Cassell um, in Bath a week ago, where he was retaliating in a sense when Andy Robinson hung onto his ankle and he sort of tried to shake himself free at least. possession just outside the bath 22 it's there for Luxton Chaloner Carling back inside the loop a bit loose though by Chaloner Everton Davis checked it with his legs that's all right but he's on the retreat winter bottom now must have been a knock-on that is not that's the half-time whistle stirring and immediately a chance to pull back three points for John Webb. Yeah, that's the kind of start that Bath wanted. Give John Webb an opportunity there to close the score, and really it was a nothing penalty. There was nothing really on there. There was no need for Harlequins to have done it, and Bath will be thinking, well, they'll be pretty pleased if they can kick three points out of that nothing situation. So the 28-year-old fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, will he be clinical? with his kicking too. 67 points for England. Uh, he loves this ground in the Grand Slam season. Now, to get within six points again. Calmly done. The nerves of a surgeon translated to the rugby field. In a way, Chaloner slightly delayed it. Carling intercepted by uh, Barnes. Now Fallon. Gets past uh, Wedderburn, pairs covers, 
Now it's a race with Halliday and Fallon. Across comes Everton Davis, all on the bounce. Fallon gets it, but he's beautifully tackled by Halliday and Davis, just short of the line. The desperation in defence and attack. An interesting decision here because there was a certain knock on there by Jim Fallon when he picked that ball up. The, the, certainly not the ball on, and the referee didn't spot it. It's enabled him to go 75 yards and really threaten the Harlequins line. Kills snapping at the heels like a terrier, but it's away by Luxton Challoner Carling. Loose for once, good pick up pairs. Challoner in trouble. Hill goes through, back comes Everton Davis. Fallon challenging, that's Fallon. It's up to Carling in defence and Guskett. Carling wins the touchdown, but it'll be a five metre scrum. Desperation stakes there. And look, it looks as though it's odds on here that uh, Jim Fallon or Jerry Gus is going to score, but again, good work by. Will Carl in the England skipper, but a lack of concentration by the Quint in the back line there that enabled... Drives himself. Held and tries to set it back. It's emerged to Hill. Hill wriggling, writhing. Obogu. Hag just short of the line. And a bath put in 12 minutes to go. Spurred on by the massive ranks of supporters. They go again through Clark, who slips it to a Jomo who's held. It's there again, though. Barnes, Guskett, man over here, Fallon. Good tackle by Wedderburn, but they're still in trouble. And Pear scrambles it away. Standing off, but set up again, Graham Dorr slips it to a Jomo. Carling had to take him head on and did. In front of the post, advantage being played to Bath. They have a man over here to Glanville's end. The pressure finally tells. The defensive barrier gives way for the first time. And Philip de Glanville with his seventh try of the season, this by far is most important. And the crucial run was by Ajomo there because he took the Harlequins midfield out there. And as the ball came out, they got a, a three onto two there. And good work there by de Glanville. It was really the pressure of the uh, Bath back row punching midfield. And here we see it there that uh, his strength takes him through a couple of tackles and well played there. 26-year-old, part of the England development squad. What a moment for him. And what a pressure kick for John Webb. This to level it with less than 10 minutes to go. The roar goes up. And Bath tied up at 12-all. It's a pressure in the midfield here that uh, plenty of time there, plenty of space for the Glanville. He's got John Webb outside him. No chance for the defenders there. Three onto two, took his chance well. And that's the trophy that awaits the Pilkington Cup, on which Bath's name has been uh, twice in the last uh, four years. Both sets of colours adorn the handles, one will be removed. Who's it to be? Phil standing off as the back row again spearheaded by Clark. Take up the challenge. Hill Obogu this time. Down by Winterbottom. 110% man he is. Barnes hoists one, dropping on pairs. The midfield's there. It falls back. And Wedderburn scrambles it away. 
Well, it was brave and uh, he did well. Yes, good work by Mike Wedderburn there. And by Ackford. And in fact, uh, well, I make it just a few seconds early, but it's going to be extra time. The scores level at 12 points all. And as last year, so for only the second time, it's an extra period of 10 minutes each way that will be played between these two great sides that have made it an epic cup final. 12 points all at the end of normal time. So I guess so much is down to leadership. Peter Winterbottom, can he uh, gird the loins of his troops? Will they have enough puff left? Andy Robinson for Bath. Ten minutes each way. A full ten minutes each way, no sudden death. And Webb fires the first salvo. The other side. Ten metres out, it's possession for more. Luxton, Winterbottom, Halliday to Wedderburn. Tries to go outside Fallon, popped up to pairs. The cover's good by Bath. Lovely break by Challoner. I guess he wasn't aware of Carling on his right hand. Brian Moore has hold of it. Quinn's regroup, reform. Acker's just a, a little bit slow, but he's in there driving again. And the Quinn's edging nearer. Bath try to take them down and concede the scrummage. Very si similar mo move there to what from the Bath line. Good surge by the Bath pack. Luxton on the narrow side, checked very well by uh, uh, the Bath back row. Carling, Halliday wasn't expecting it. Luxton, Challoner, poor pass to Glanville, Everton Davis, back on his feet well. there for Bath, there's lots of room up this near side, Barnes goes himself to Challoner, Webb can't hold it, knocks on, he's got plenty of men in support, to Luxton, Challoner, Pears, has he got the legs, good tackle, and that was by de Glanville, fed on by Sheesby, and uh, Wedderburn knew that the pass inside could have been a score to Bath, Robinson looms on the far side. Back there is Challoner, the only defender. And this is grueling. De Glanville, the switch to Swift, enveloped by uh, Winterbottom, but the play continues. Halliday is in with the tackle. Bath, though, are there in numbers. Obogu drives on. Inside the Quinns 22. Barnes, Guskett tries the drop goal but misses. The crowds in the East and West stands thought it was over. Outstanding effort for England against Scotland in the Calcutta Cup game there. And you can see it just slice, slice there off his foot and misses the right-hand post there, but uh, relief there for the Harlequins. And so, that was Davis. Luxton in trouble. Russell. Davis still in trouble again. On the halfway line. Hill waits, chooses his spot, but puts it out on the full. Quinn's ball, Luxton, Challoner, Carling has a go, breaks the first tackle, collared by Fallon. Winterbottom in to do as he's so often done, win that vital uh, second phase possession. And again, Carling looking so sharp. Standing deep. Luxton has it. They, they know it's coming, but he's sliced it. The pressure told there was a, a posse of four angled to greet him. Back goes Guskett. Guskett trying to uh, not concede the five metre scrum. Still going. Still on his own line and finds room to get the clearance kick. Was looking rather i think for the counter-attack run but he'll be in carling 
First dummy is bought. The cover tackle comes in, though. Ten metres out. Luxton digging it out. Will Pears try a drop goal this time? No, he's missed. Will Pears go again for the drop goal? Hill isn't even looking at his opposite number so much as waiting to get at Pears. And the back row are lined up to home in once again on the Harlequin fullback. Yes, it's a tribute to both sides, the way how they defended outstandingly well. Knew well that there have only been two chances really in the match and they've both been taken. And by the uh, rules of the competition, by the way, the tries are equal, the conversions were the same, they each converted their try. So if it stays at 12 all, it will be a drawn title, a shared trophy. Three minutes to go. Hill on his blocks, pairs with the drop goal, it's half charge down. Webb to the rescue, and once again, Quinn's denied. Cruel, I guess, for either side to lose at this stage. A superb cup final. Pairs, kick, Webb. Again, not risking to, wanting to risk anything. An awkward bounce, Wedderburn. Hammers it away. Referee Fred Hart already looking at his watch. Well, I'm willing to bet that if Bath get clean possession, it'll be a Barnes drop goal attempt from here. Twenty seconds remain, so perhaps the last play of the match. The end of a grueling 100 minutes. It's Barnes going to try that drop goal. It's close. The referee raises his arm, and with 10 seconds remaining, Stuart Barnes has clinched the title with his 19th drop goal of his career. And that summons the final whistle. Bath have snatched it at the last gasp. Heartbreak for Peter Winterbottom, and triumph at the last gasp for Bath. Unbelievable scenes. Only his third drop goal of the season, the desolation of defeat of Paul Ackford. But Stuart Barnes, the hero of the hour and of that precise moment, ten seconds from time, the end of the second period of extra time, has denied Harlequins and brought Bath the great double of league and cup, and this was it. What a tremendous effort there by Stuart Barnes. It's a good 38, 39 metres out there. As soon as he left his boot, it was never in doubt there. That uh, And what a tragedy for Harlequins that uh, it pushed them so far to, to lose the game with the last kick of the game. But fair play to Bath that they stuck at it, they went behind, they dug in. But what a tremendous advert also for the English game. Well, an epic final, and Bath never gave up. And credit to both sides, cruel really that one had to lose, but it's Bath that triumph with that last gasp kick, the drop goal of Stuart Barnes that brings them for the second time the only club ever to win both the league and cup in the one season. And Bath take the seventh final of their history of cup finals and they've never lost. So to the victor, the spoils. Andy Robinson, an inspiring captain all season, takes his side up to receive from the Rugby Football Union President Peter Yarrington and Anthony Cove, chairman of Pilkington. The Pilkington Cup, the double for the second time in 1989 and now in 1992. Andy Robinson and a little smacker for the man who made it in the end. Stuart Barnes, Gareth Chilcott, one of only two players to appear in all seven of those cup triumphs. Gareth Chilcott and 